Hong Kong's leader has finally caved in to months of pressure and civil unrest. Carrie Lam has officially withdrawn an extradition bill that had at times brought more than a million anti-government protesters into the streets. More than a thousand people have been arrested. Incidents over these past two months have shocked and saddened Hong Kong people. We are all very anxious about Hong Kong, our home. We all hope to find a way out of the current impasse. The legislation would have allowed individuals to be sent to mainland China for trial, thus jeopardizing the territory's legal autonomy. Fourteen weeks of sometimes violent protests have pushed the Chinese-ruled city into its worst crisis in decades and dented its reputation as a safe place to do business. Overall business activity was at its lowest in a decade last month. Retail sales and tourist numbers crashed and some of the biggest firms were dragged into the dispute. The Hang Seng stock index had already been hit by the China-US trade war. And since the protests intensified in June, it's lost more than $500 billion in value. It traded up 4% after Lamb's announcement. Real estate deals in the world's most expensive city for housing dropped more than a third in the second quarter. One of the biggest corporate casualties is Cathay Pacific Airways. Chairman John Slosser became the second top executive to resign after bookings declined and Beijing pressured the carrier to suspend staff who support the demonstrations. While many stocks, including Cathay, rallied following the bill's withdrawal, protesters say they have no reason to cheer. The concession marks a dramatic U-turn for Lam, but she stopped short of meeting demonstrators' other demands, including setting up an independent inquiry into allegations of police brutality. It's too late and too slow now. In the past two months, with our strike and protest, we strongly aware the crackdown of human rights. We are not satisfying with Hong Kong government just withdraw the bill. The protest will continue until the day we have free election. Investors are still hoping the bill's withdrawal will end the unrest. But for many of Hong Kong citizens, it's the only way to make their voices heard by authorities who for months have turned a deaf ear. Sibel Karkush, TRT World. For more analysis, we're joined by Sean King. He's a senior vice president at business advisory firm Park Strategies. Sean, remind us why this extradition bill and the resulting protests have been so damaging to business, not just in Hong Kong, but in the broader region. Well, Hong Kong was already reeling from the effects of a slowdown in mainland China and the U.S.-Beijing trade war. And while there have been protests against Hong Kong's unelected government before, because remember, Chief Executive Carrie Lam is not voted by her own people. She's just one of a few candidates allowed to run by Beijing. This was the first time that the business community felt imperiled by something the government was doing. By saying people could be extradited to the mainland on trumped-up charges, business people knew that they could be dragged over there as a result of business disputes. That's why you saw so many people uh, fill the streets and then make it uneasy for people to shop downtown. Also, when President Trump involved the demonstrations and said he could not do a U.S.-China trade deal if Beijing cracked down, that also put on hold any U.S.-China trade deal. So it's for those many reasons that business was hurt so strongly. We've seen uh, Asian markets closing higher on Wednesday, and that was before this announcement had officially been made. That was just on the back of speculation. How would you expect the markets to react when they reopen on Thursday? I would expect them all to be higher just on this news. Now, Trump may tweet something between now and then on the Fed or about Xi Jinping that might change things all around. But just on this news, I would expect markets to be higher, starting with Hong Kong, the U.S., and elsewhere. And why is that? Why is this having such an impact across the broader region and in international markets, not just in that Asian sort of precinct? Because this is not directly related to the U.S.-China trade war. But since Trump made Hong Kong an issue, this now removes an impediment to a possible trade deal between Washington and Beijing if one were to exist. So while this does not solve the U.S.-China trade war, the fact that this has been 
somewhat deflated for now makes it possible for Washington and Beijing to move forward with the trade deal if they're ready. We're hearing that it's unlikely that this uh, one concession is going to appease the protesters. They have said that protests will continue. Do you think this positive reaction then will be short-lived if we see these protests resume in the days and weeks that follow? Can't say. I think they'll be deflated somewhat. This is one of only five demands, the most significant of which would be for a direct election of the Hong Kong leader. But the significance of this climb down cannot be overstated. You have an unelected government backed up by the largest dictatorship in the world, Beijing, basically climbing down to appease protesters' demands. This is a major victory. Uh, I don't expect protesters to be satisfied, just like in the U.S. primaries. Any candidate's goal is to be his or her party's nominee. But that doesn't mean you don't celebrate individual states along the way that you happen to win. So I think protesters should take a victory lap and pro pat themselves on the back that they achieved this thing. What's different is, though, of the five demands, this is the only one that directly impacted the business community, which is what made the protest so compelling. So I suspect a lot of the sympathizers to the protesters within the business community might lose interest now that this is taken off the table. But as Joshua Wong said, who, funny enough, is in Taipei, they're going to continue. I just don't know if the business community will stay as engaged as they have to to date. And uh, just quickly, we've seen uh, it was uh, sectors in the market like uh, tourism, transport and uh, property developers that rebounded strongly today. Uh, just explain to us briefly why those particular sectors are doing well on the back of this. I think anybody with big business in downtown Hong Kong, you know, the airport is a big part of Hong Kong's business. It's a big retail sector. So anything to do with tourism in terms of mainland Chinese tourists visiting Hong Kong, other countries, people visiting Hong Kong for conferences or tourism, or any stocks that are susceptible to U.S.-China trade tensions, they will all gain. I don't want to name any specific companies, but anybody who has to do with Hong Kong retail, tourism, and or U.S.-China trade will go up at least in the next few days as a result of this news. Sean, Sean King joining us from New York City. Thank you for your time.